So where I come from is a kind of complicated question and I'm never quite sure how to answer it. My parents are English and I lived in Bermuda until I was seven. And then when I was seven, we moved to Ireland. And I've also lived in France, in Germany. Now I'm living in Paris. It was really, really wonderful to grow up in Bermuda. It's um, just beautiful beaches and sun and it's such a privilege, especially for a child, to be able to go to the beach practically every day. I miss it all the time. I miss the, the warmth, I miss the, the sound of the ocean. I always find it difficult if I don't see the ocean for a few months. So I always try and get in my medicine. <laughs> my parents, when we were living in Bermuda, my dad was working in a hotel in the maintenance and my mum was a lawyer. And now in Ireland, my mum teaches English and literacy to adults. And my dad teaches Irish music. I have a brother, he's um, 21. Seamus and he's a viola player. My dad plays a lot of different instruments. He plays banjo, mandolin, guitar, bagpipes, elam pipes, <laughs> tin whistle, everything. I was always around music and I actually started playing when I was two. I started playing the violin with the Suzuki method. This method is, it's kind of based around the fact that two-year-olds can speak Japanese. So if they can speak Japanese, or any language, but I think Japanese is probably more difficult, then you can play the violin um, or other instruments. You start, by, start playing by ear, and then when I was older, I probably learned to read music when I started to read words. Um, so it just kind of happened naturally, I guess. It's not actually difficult technically compared to classical music. It's just a different style. You know, you go to a pub, and you just play some music with friends and <laughs> drink a beer. It's very relaxed. I just have a lot of fun memories, especially as a teenager, going to music festivals uh, around Ireland. Yeah, I think it's, you know, you play with other people. It's this kind of togetherness thing. Well, I think I learned a lot from playing Irish music, especially like rhythm and things like this. It's just kind of gets ingrained um, into your blood, I guess. Kronberg is a special place. Well, what I really, really love about Kronberg, what I think is incredible here, it's this small little place, but then with these wonderful musicians, so just incredible musicians that, you know, would be very hard to meet, like Andra Schiff, for example. Something that really makes it, makes it special here is, is the the kind of community of, of musicians. I would definitely invite Mozart because, I mean, I'm a huge fan. I love, I just love his music. I think it's the most incredible thing in the world. And I also think that he was a super fun guy. I'm sure if he came, it would be like a huge party. Classical music is so, so wonderful. We have to do kind of everything we can to keep it alive. I think there are a lot of misconceptions about classical music that it's only for rich people or for old people. I think what we need to do is expose children to classical music and not in a way that like you learned in school because I have teachers that ruined Shakespeare for me. Make it a fun experience. Try not to make it too historical and too serious. It's, it's fun. I'm sure back in the day, like I don't think Mozart's parties were analytical. I think people were going crazy. And we need to remember this, like this is, that's what classical music is about. It's alive, it's, it's not stuck in the past, it's current. And we need to just share that with young people and help them feel it. It's not about understanding or telling, it's about helping them feel this um, this wonderful music. Thank you.